I'm Melanie Carr, a creator of Hokma Heart Hotel and Medical Intuitive Mentor. So I'm here with Stephanie Baker. I'll let you introduce yourself, yes, Stephanie. So I'm Stephanie Baker, and I am. Uh, uh, my website is stephismo.com. I'm I'm an, uh, a certified astrologer and CGR certified astrologer, and I'm also the founder of AccessEcoTours.com. Project Maya Encounter. You can find it there also, and. Um, so it's about um, travel uh, alternatives to traveling. So retreats, anything that is good for body, mind, and soul. So that out of so the wonderful, Stephanie and I have decided to create a November uh, intuitive and astrological outlook for the month and what's coming for us in the future. Because sometimes the road gets rocky, and I want to hear Stephanie's outlook astrology outlook first because i'm very curious to see whether her outlook is in sync with my own intuitive feelings about what is happening this month and what's coming for everyone yeah so what like, this is, yes yes this is extremely exciting i must also say and um so i i have um organized the events that are taking place in the in the sky like the the actual um transits that are happening with the planets and i brought them in the chronological order and i i would say since this is a brand new baby for both of us i will just go ahead and and we tackle them one by one and um okay. and then Maloney, you give your feedback to it. Let's start with today. We are starting this new thing on a new moon, which is the coolest thing, um, because this is when we put the seed in the ground. And um, so we are at nine Scorpio, nine degrees Scorpio in this in the zodiac in the um in the um in the signs. And it was actually early this morning, like almost 6 a.m. Pacific time. And um, so that is, um, Scorpio is about depth and it is about uh, like really wanting to go deep and it's intense. It is purifying also. So with this new moon, this is giving us a chance to um, like go deep yeah. and, and asking questions, asking uncomfortable questions also. And um, a couple of other aspects happening at the same time even though they're not perfect yet they're not exact the same degree but we we do have also uh, mars and pluto opposition that means mars and pluto both are the rulers rulers are the sign the um the planets that are naturally associated with a sign so now we looked a little bit at uh, scorpio we know scorpio is 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 deep and intense and purifying and the two planets have a similar mm, job or taste to them that means mars is action and is um is also it's it's getting it's it can be cutting because pluto mars and scorpio are about cutting away what we don't need it is like the surgeon in the zodiac, and um, having these two on opposite ends, opposite ends, um, Mars being the the like action and the warrior also ha is fearless and it wants to go ahead and is fast. Pluto is is more more subtle. It's more like underground doing doing things that are not so obvious as with Mars. Mars, you can see he's hot and 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 steaming and fast and direct and, and with the directness also honest because it's impulsive, Mars. And um, Pluto, so I always say Mars is the street gangster and Pluto is the mafia boss because the mafia boss acts more in the background and you don't see him and it, it, there's nothing really that you can like put a finger on because he's always in the background and pulls the strings. So that example is kind of like, um, like gangster. Okay, we don't want to associate ourselves with gangsters, but it's just to say one is obvious and in the in the like in in motion and obvious and the other is more unconscious and these two forces are up at opposite ends it's a it's um it wants to be brought in balance anything that is opposing we have to find a balance 
and this this is going on as we have this new moon and um so it's exact on sunday the third and but it's already we can feel it whenever it's really um like eight degrees six degrees apart from the exact degree then we hear the train rattling on the on the tracks already <laughs> so yes. and another thing that is already taking place is venus which is like the attraction, the beauty, the feminine, and Jupiter, which is expansion and and being optimistic and um, generous and all this. So they are called the benefics, whereas the, the three that I mentioned earlier, actually the two, Mars and Pluto, they are called malefics. And, uh, and so the benefics, Venus and uh, Jupiter, if they're opposing each other, they're also opposing each other, then they are not necessarily, it's not necessarily helpful because it can, it can make that we are overextend, extending, overexpanding. We don't set our healthy boundaries in terms of like heart related matters, relationships, for example uh things that feel good because venus wants to feel good and when we um when we want too much of a good thing it can be damaging mm -hmm. so this little mm -hmm. cluster is kind of happening with this full moon even though it's not um exact yet so i pass the reins over to you melody <laughs> wow i'm amazed because the biggest thing i've been feeling observing and um even also because I'm in Mexico, my mother's in Canada, and we were having a talk about this as well. And she's also very intuitive. And we were discussing about belief systems and how polarized in the whole world everything is. We have really strong issues about belief systems in every area in the world right now. And I think this might actually be a reflection of exactly what you're talking about, because um, I just made a video about um, carnivore diet versus vegan and why we're labeling and about our belief systems. And it's very interesting because it is a very painful time because the whole situation in general is forcing us to, like you said, cut away or it's almost like a war to clean away and eliminate this kind of belief systems garbage that everyone is carrying around first of all not respecting other people's feelings and belief systems and also not recognizing that inside yourself your belief systems are only what you're able to manage at this time in your evolution but your belief systems you know you you believe one belief system and then another belief system comes up you grab onto that one and then you don't realize that you you got rid of one of them. But now, uh, okay, so now I am not vegan anymore. I'm carnivore now. And now you're carnivore. But it's like, hang on a second. All you did was switch one belief system for another. And instead of saying, I am a carnivore or I am a vegan, I'm like, okay, I have to say I am Melanie. And I'm going to use my true intuition about my diet. And that's where the, where this video came out. And it's very interesting because there was a few comments, very violent comments saying, you know, you're stupid or this or that, or Eckhart told this or that. It was, wow. Um, if, if for example, the, the vegan or vegetarian diet is more pacific and more kind and loving, why is there this huge pain body reaction from people who um, want to impose their their idea or their belief system on others. And I think this is where, like you said, the, the uh, Mars and mm -hmm. the other planet was cutting. It was, it's cutting, it's cutting, almost cutting away, but it's a painful cutting. It's not the gentle, pleasurable cutting of, uh, of, that's of things. And it's, and it's happening in the politics, it's happening in the government, it's happening in, um, in Hamas and Israel, like where it's horrible because it causes war, um, it's belief systems for hundreds of thousands of years of human beings evolution in every aspect of our lives right now. And it's very painful. Even it just ego belief system like, 
okay, so I, I'm doing this and I'm showing people and you, and this person should or should not do that. And, and there's a lot of conflict right now. And a lot of people are suffering emotionally. Well, yeah, Mars. Mars is conflict and uh, Pluto is control. So that's the whole thing. And yeah, I saw your video. It was awesome. I lo I loved it. And I, I totally support what you say because it's really what we make out of it. And everybody is so different. Funnily that you, you say um, you're talking about nutrition and all this. Mars is in the sign of cancer. And that is all about nutrition, food, the stomach and and family. So Personally, I was just in Germany and I had some uh, real challenges with family, with my mother. So it is, I saw this and I went like, wow, this is a, like a perfect expression of Mars in cancer. The best way to deal with Mars in cancer is to renovate your kitchen or your house to begin with. That's because it's home and it's Mars is action and the builder. So that's a good, good way that we find um, ways to transmute this energy instead of becoming aggressive and angry using it to build something <laughs> oh it's so amazing you said that because even me and my partner um with all this energy i was dealing with some other personal things that had happened with the group and he was feeling all the energy and we started even to have and i told him i totally understand that you need to take your space and i need to take my space for a few hours go and i'll go yeah and then we we joined back together and this morning we were working to we moved all the farm from the front of the where the hotel is oh, to yes. the back and we were working on the farm we were just putting the the nests for the turkeys and and putting a little stairways and doing some little home things and it brought both of us so much peace yeah. that it brought us back into exactly you were working on the domicile of the of your farm animals so that's a wonderful expression of it that's beautiful yes. okay so um i have to take 30 seconds to uh, give somebody something really fast yes um, sorry we waited all day for the gas to come and it finally came and i'm the only one who has the card oh my god okay so i'll invite you just for a minute if you want why don't you give some advice uh, about um in relationships between humans with these energies what is the best thing to do to try to have that connection and understanding? Yes. And I will just give them my card so that. All right. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't fine. think this would happen. All right. That's so I'll let fine. you do that. Exactly. And okay, then... I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. So to the viewers now, um, Melanie and I, we are neighbors. And sometimes, um, because we are kind of like rural, sometimes you just have to deal with situations. And um, this is life and we are real people. So we are authentic. And yeah, the best way of dealing with this aggression is um, either, as, as I said, uh, building something creative, creating something. Um, also, um, a brisk walk or sports like squash or so some sports that are that are really um, using up a lot of energy and um and that will that redirect all the the energy instead of becoming angry because often it is the inner pressure that we have that we that we get antsy because it's not fast enough. We want to re see results faster or so. And um, the other thing to watch out for is Mars is action and it's a it's um, a fire, fire uh, planet as Aries, which is the natural sign that is um, associated with with Mars is also fire. So um, cancer is the stomach. So we have to also be careful about uh, stomach ulcers or like upset stomachs. Here she is again. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we need gas, of course, and in, in, in our rural setting. <laughs> and I made sure the cats were out and the dogs were down and I organized everything so there'd be no interruptions. Yeah. And of course, uh, it's okay, like you said, this is our new baby. Exactly. And also, I mean, we are real people. That's what I just also said. We are we are authentic and this things happen. So we are not <laughs> pretending to be like a um like a I mean we're professional people, of course, professional ladies. Um, but still we are natural and we are dealing with the task at hand whenever it, it arises <laughs> right in the, in the best way you can <laughs> wonderful yes, exactly so, and you were really fast being up in your eagle's nest in the third on the third floor <laughs> <laughs> 
I had a rally go down with my car to pay, so that was good. <laughs> oh, that yes, <laughs> yes, because these new tanks are very large, so when they come to fill it, they have to do it with the car because it's not enough cash for them to do it. So, yes. but wonderful. Um, Stephanie, I'm very curious because one of the other interesting things is that uh, have you ever noticed that your energy, because you go just now to Germany, and now to California and to Mexico, and you triangle and you travel around the world. And I I don't triangle because I'm very much situated here in Mexico, but I triangle with my mom. She's mm -hmm. in Canada, and then she, sometimes they're traveling around the world as well in different places. Mm -hmm. And um, I think part of our traveling and our perspective and our intuition about what is happening comes from seeing, like you said, you were with your mother and you saw certain certain situations and then you go to california and you see other situations right now i think in the next week we're talking about a major um decision in the us as far as oh, yes. yeah. the presidency and the the polarity uh being so divided between the liberals and the conservatives and what you know the future of the way things will be in in the us and the effect it has on the world what is your opinion about this? Well, yeah, you're right. We're, we're getting divided. But I think the, the idea now for us people, wherever we stand on the on the political spectrum, um, it is we should just really learn again to speak our our opinion without pushing our opinion on other people um, without the other person being triggered so that means when we hear an opinion that we don't um agree with just saying like okay so this is your opinion i have mine we are um around eight billion people on this planet it is just natural that there are probably close to eight billion different um opinions for example we had um a family meeting we, we were like 19 people and at one point my uncle was curious and said like uh, so if you could um vote because i'm i am i have a green card only so i cannot vote really i don't have a passport i think if i went and um i would vote maybe they would let me vote because they're really eager to have many many uh, voices that or mm -hmm. many voters so but i said i mean i would if if i had a choice um i would probably um vote for trump so mm -hmm. and people will just um raise their hands but my uncle was cool he he says okay so this is your opinion and okay. it's different with my brother he would probably freak out this you find um things or so and that i think we should all be more relaxed and say yeah hey interesting i i listen to your opinion and just let them let everyone be and this anger this is so so on the it is like really um it's like an avatar. It's not us, really. It is really what we are trained to do. We are trained by media to to um, to like have an um, have an attitude if somebody does not think as we do, whether they they're pro or contra abortion, whether they are pro or contra vaccination, whatever it is, I think we should look at the person again. And I mean, we were able to do that in the past. How could we have let that happen that we are so um, like uh, manipulated that we that we that we own that we are that we're so egocentric about it. So that's something um, I think we have to learn that again. So I think that's my opinion that we should it's, learn. Is that coming, Stephanie? Because as people are evolving, there's a lot more people now evolving into the spiritual community. A lot of people are evolving into new ideas about emotional intelligence. And for example, Eckhart Tolle and the power of now, and many people are very interested in growth. But as they get the first little bit of growth on the spiritual path, they become a little bit like a spiritual ego and then they start to feel like they're somebody now that they've mm -hmm. done this work now they're going to start to teach or tell or do these things and it's very interesting because i i noticed um uh, i was in a group yesterday and i was giving a conference and a course uh, for a group of 10 people and i was teaching the course on a more uh, empathic intuitive vibration and it was i was flying it was really cool because i had the notes from the course 
But as I was giving the course, the different people that were there who were mentors as well mm -hmm. um, were starting to participate and they were starting to give the next part of the course and the next part of the course. And, and I thought, this is really amazing. I'm teaching it not on a 3D a verbal level. I'm teaching the course to these mentors on an energetic, like transferring the information to them on a much higher frequency. Yeah. And the vibe was just, I was like almost like ecstatic because the vibe was so amazing. And I thought, this is so cool. And then I thought, okay, well, I wonder if they'd be interested in knowing one more step further to things that were a little more like on the cutting edge of stuff. And so I thought, well, how could I present this without, you know, ruffling anyone's feathers? So I just said, well, let's make your energy really feminine. And I just said, so I think as mentors, we all have to remember that we're always growing. And then I said, um, okay, so um, as company coaches, and I want to present you with another option, when you have people who are really, really close to having any kind of help, and one of the girls said, well, when people don't, they're not interested, we just, you know, we just don't bother because, you know, we've learned to identify who, who is uh, ready for the information, who is not. And I thought, oh, okay. So I, I, so I tried to insist and I probably should have just not said another word, but I said, okay, well, you can work with people in the fourth dimension, in other dimensions to help them. If their soul gives you permission, sometimes their ego just will not or they're so afraid and in this moment their leader it almost felt energetically like he stood up but he didn't even stand up yeah. but all of a sudden i just got like smashed in front of everyone and oh. it was very interesting because in that moment i realized that there were two or three people in the group that were picking up the information on that frequency mm -hmm. that i was flying on and i think it might have even maybe even scared this person mm. a little bit yeah. because but, when but, I mentioned working in a different dimension I think it was like what yeah. is this girl talking about and he was very um very condescending and it was very difficult and then he said well I don't really see that you're giving the, the points of the course you know we got to give the points like this and mm. I just said okay um I'm done here yeah <laughs> You know, well, because I said, okay, um, everyone has their right to their opinion and everyone has a right to their um, to their perspective. But I think, like you said, we've lost that respect and that ability to listen to another or mm -hmm. uh, give the other person their their place if someone's mm -hmm. giving a lecture. Oh, God. And it becomes um, doubly important because mercury tomorrow on saturday the second mercury goes into sagittarius and sagittarius can be the preacher mercury is the mind and when mercury is in sag it may end up like we, we are like getting above our head or so we are getting we are getting what is that word i'm looking for you know like getting into a preacher mode and trying mm -hmm. to um like being very opinionated and there we have to like really be mindful mm -hmm. and as you say leave everybody their opinion without being mm -hmm. triggered by it and everything has its place and i think also that naturally when when groups or people are not compatible they will automatically um like float apart and mm -hmm. you know what belongs together will not be separable and mm -hmm. what does not not belong together it's like an anti-magnet so i think mm -hmm. that's what you're you're saying this so timely in a timely manner and the other thing when you when you talked about spirituality in the back of my mind i thought oh that is like saturn in pisces because pisces is spirituality and saturn wants to make it um practical in a way practical spirituality and um also it's it's about the spiritual hygiene and um practice of spirituality and in daily life in re real life and not just sitting on a pillow wearing these clothes and when you're out of these clothes and if you don't wear a turban anymore then you're beating your your girlfriend or so and or you are walking around with a big ego and uh in designer clothes which is mm -hmm. just very superficial so that all this really is very um timely 
would you say with the with what's going on in the cosmos <laughs> It was very uh, shocking to me, but I also realized because several people reached out to me from the group and they told me, oh, you know, we really want to work with you. This was really nice. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the people that will be there on your frequency will be there and the people that don't fall away. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, it was very uh, energetically, it was very hard for me to, I kept to myself almost for two days and just like allow the energy to process because mostly I felt really sad because the vibration was so amazing. I felt really, really sad that it, it didn't go together with the whole group. And then I realized yeah. not everyone is ready um, or for the information or maybe what's happening. And the reason people are getting so like war about it is in mm. one side, because we've been hearing the war on drugs, the war on terror, the war on, uh, that is so you know, true. Yeah. It's, it's like a drama, a political drama. Yeah. And and the media is teaching us to have a war on everything between Absolutely. everyone. But also, I think what's happening is a, a lot of people, they are growing. But now that they're growing and they see more things, um, they're not used to the new energies and the new feelings. And, and, yes, and so there's yeah. a lot of fear. There's a lot, a Absolutely. lot of fear. Yeah. I think and, it's the fear making people fight. Yes, exactly. I totally agree with that. And I think in nature, everybody feels that we have this ability because in the past it has been like that. It's just that over over the decades, we have been more and more trained to be functional um, consumers and not thinking for ourselves and using mm -hmm. like popping a pill instead of using herb medicine or, or natural medicine. And also mm -hmm. the mind and how we what we eat. Your video was, I mean, I recommend anyone listening to this, go to Melody his channel and on youtube and listen um, to that because it's it's just hits home that is um make it the food makes us sick and it um you know i mean their frequencies there it is proven that in australia in the lockdown times they used um mass control weapons how do they call it i think crowd control it's it's proven so they had um, like a like an antenna or so and they directed it to the people and in order to control them and it's not a secret anymore so th things like that can influence us and they can provoke a uh, fear and if we are not um like a sovereign in our in our like who we are in our being and trusting in the like in a higher process and trusting that there is something good also yes there are there are definitely warmongers and there are definitely clickbaiters that are doing like they're they're putting out dramatic content for just getting clicks so that is what you have also but i think that more and more we people with all this transit of uh, saturn in Pisces, um, that we we have like a sensor in our like in our like I don't know chest in our heart. We can pick up if somebody is um, authentic or if somebody wants to sell us something. And I think we are just careful mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting because I immediately realized that I had been just discarded from mm -hmm. from the group. And yeah. I knew the minute he uh, reacted, so I was like, okay, we're done here now. It mm -hmm. is what it is. My intention was totally uh sincere and giving everything actually was I wasn't charging even anything for this I just mm -hmm. offered to give them the information about the creative energy and yeah. um so in that moment was very interesting but I I did I received a very inauthentic message from him telling me that I hope you take this with love but um you know maybe we'll use your place for a retreat or something <laughs> I'm like no thank you uh, uh, I'm done too you know I'm like I'm yeah. done too because to I I don't you know thank thank goodness you know um when you are an independent woman I think you and I are and a lot of women are working in this place and a lot of men as well independent not just because you don't rely on a man but but also men who don't rely on another company mm -hmm. or people. And this is where I realized most of the people in the group relied on this man to have their money or to have their clients yes, or things. Exactly. So I knew right away that it was not a good situation because the person who is controlling the money and the people in the situation is not ready, still mm -hmm. has a lot of triggers, still has yes. a lot of fear. It's and not, not eye level. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. where we are, we're heading to it. And it's, I mean, right now we are in, in very interesting times. So as I said, we have the new moon, we have Mercury going in Sag. So it's, um, we have to make sure that we are very realistic and, 
and loving and um, not opinionated. And then we have this Mars Pluto. And when Mars is now in Cancer, we talked about food and all this. And so when Mars goes into Cancer, uh, into Leo on the on the Sunday, actually, on the same day with the with the exact opposition to Pluto, that is then Leo can be also hot and steamy. So we have Mars that is hot and steamy and we have Leo sign that is hot and steamy there there it's again necessary to 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 be reasonable to be to not not get temper tantrums or so and mm -hmm. and um break break bridges or or like be too much in the ego that is super important and then I was gonna break some serious bridges Stephanie I was I even made mm -hmm. the audios but I didn't send them and it cost me everything to hold all that energy inside mm -hmm. uh I was very um worked yeah. up about it so <laughs> this is why I love having these meetings with you each month because um when you are going through these situations now if I had known a few days ago that this is the energy that's coming around, then mm. I might have been, oh, okay, this is what's happening. I could yeah. understand better and maybe I would have managed the situation better. So mm. I think the important thing to, to resume it all into it, one small phrase is that this month of November, it might be just really good to just be a little more silent and maybe mm -hmm. not so not Absolutely. opinionated before we act before we react it's really rather response giving a response instead of reacting and mm -hmm. and yeah just taking a, like a silent breathe breath or like a real breath and then already we 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 have to keep the cool head and that's super important um so and then we have this uh, Venus Jupiter opposition that is it's just very um like hot and and maybe we we are we are we're not reasonable so we have to actually get a ring on ourselves I had to just yeah well just be by myself for a little while because I was having a temper tantrum but if you're going to have a temper tantrum have it by yourself that is helpful exactly hit the kiss the, the pillow you know just <laughs> yes yes the pillow that's that's yes. all and when when I had I mean I visited Germany many um, many times and and we have this um thing with my mom um she is she can be hot headed to begin with. And mm -hmm. the best thing I do is then just grab my jacket and go for a walk. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. And um, that's what, what we can do. So then let's continue on our path, path through November, the 11th of November. Then mm -hmm. we have Venus going into Capricorn. It's now in um it's now in, in Aquarius. So wait. Capricorn it's now in Sag so now Venus is in Sagittarius and there mm -hmm. Venus is also very they have the um wait Venus is going into Capricorn wait a minute oh yes okay yes 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 so it is the opposition to um Jupiter and mm -hmm. so but now and and now um Venus is in Jupiter's sign Mm -hmm. And Jupiter is one on one hand side is retrograde. That means it is not the best. It's not the um, the healthy, the natural, flowy, forward action oriented um, Jupiter. So and Jupiter is in Gemini. So mm -hmm. Jupiter would it belongs into Sag where Venus is, and mm -hmm. Jupiter in in a sign that is smaller that means gemini is naturally associated with with mercury mercury is in jupiter's sign mercury mm -hmm. is too small for this big sign of jupiter so that can be clashy it can it is not it's not the best placement so we have to make sure our mind is we're, we're not looking at the details and forgetting the big picture we have to make sure we are not looking at the big picture and forgetting the details that's mm -hmm. the thing with jupiter and or, or, or sag versus gemini it's the detail <laughs> versus the big picture and mm -hmm. and so you see the energetic um uh Jude, uh, venus is is in a in a very expansive sign and very boisterous and jovial and now it's going into capricorn with with where it's more constrictive and 
uh, contractive contraction. It is more reasonable. It's more careful. It, and there, Venus, Venus wants and 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 attracts and all this, but it's more reasonable and um, a little, yeah, as I said, cautious. So planning ahead, having an idea, having a plan before we want something, being more mm -hmm. like you know, mm -mm, putting the belt a little uh like a, a few holes you know tighter it's not being too big and throwing the money out of the window and and having expenses it's really more planning ahead and knowing uh to manage your energy and manage your your wants and needs and all this being more and, re and resources and resources. manage your resources in general yes. And last month in our meeting, uh, we had talked about um, whether or not the land would sell, that we were working for projects here. And you said by the end of October and the beginning of November, that energy would change. Yeah. So what has happened with that part of things? Because I had all of a sudden, even just last week, I had uh, several people that were very interested in buying the land and huh. it was very interesting, but still... I'm waiting. Nothing, nothing has happened still. Yeah. So and yeah, I mean, um, Capricorn is is the sign of the builder, the architect. Mm -hmm. So it's it's um it's earth, earth mm -hmm. and ground. So Venus is also is bringing ben um a benefits. So that could that could be the reason why all of a sudden there's there's interest there's there's connections also venus is this the um planet associated with taurus on one side the tangible and then libra on the other side it's more the uh social the social expression of love and beauty and connection and attraction and um mm -hmm. so in capricorn it's it's getting serious it's getting serious and it's it's about yeah it's it's about um it's about planning and so and the builder as i said it's it's about building and and architecture so that could be could be part of things yeah the moving parts mm -hmm. in that. i'm still waiting i'm just hoping because we have so many projects on hold yeah. like finishing the team mascal and a few things we're mm. just waiting for the land to be sold to do that so i'm like is it gonna step yeah. is it gonna be sold yeah. soon the other <laughs> thing is that saturn saturn is the natural ruler of the sign of capricorn and saturn mm. is turning direct direct on the on the 15th mm -hmm. so venus enters capricorn on the 11th and saturn is turning direct um on the 15th and on the, the same day, we have a full moon. Full moon brings things to completion. And Saturn direct, uh, so direct means, and I think we briefly talked about it um, on our last um, um, uh, podcast. So you have planets, Not no planet goes really backwards. So they all turn forward, but it's uh, it's the perspective. So when we look at, at the uh, backdrop of the fixed stars, then it can happen that we appear to be faster and we look that um, Saturn is falling back and this is actually not true, but um, it's all, where are we on the orbits? Are we closer to the sun? And anyway, so there is um, there's this um, phenomenon um, that when a planet appears to be retrograde, it is it is they have an energy and it's like a burning glass or it's like a massage so they hover over a degree for longer and they're more intense it's like a you know like when you have a magnifier and you hold it under the sun above a piece of dry leaf or so you can set that on fire actually or paper so when when a planet goes forward it is also the energy is intensified so saturn is making uh, is concrete it's like it's like like signing a contract actually right it's things like, are going to happen and maybe with the full moon all yeah. of these people that want to buy because there's so many people that want to buy it and i wonder it's been very curious yeah. why it just hasn't happened yet and Not yet. Okay. i feel like it will happen this month and probably within yeah. the next couple of weeks month, exactly so you have the full moon. Uh -huh. and the full moon is in taurus it's also earth and um 
it's it's where Uranus is, so there can be surprise <laughs> issues like um, very quick and very fast. Somebody says like, okay, there are so many other um, like prospect buyers, and I want to make sure that um, I really get the contract and I and I can purchase this. It's a cute house actually, and then yes. they say like, here, I put the cash on the table, give it to, to me right away. It can be fast. It can be um, mm -hmm. it can be speedy. So. Oh. Yes, that's that. Oh, exciting. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, I like it's, that. Oh, it's Stephanie, flawless. one of the things I love, um, I love that you um, find the right words to explain the different areas of astrology, because I think it's very important for people learning or who are interested in astrology to be able to understand. So yeah, sometimes so I start getting lost a little when there's a lot of moons and a lot of, um, you're, yeah, you're yeah. talking about a lot of planets and, and then I start to get lost and then you bring me right back down to the point because then you give me an example like the magnifying glass. Yes, And, uh -huh. and you're always explaining um, the astrology in a way that people can really get the feeling for it. And I think that's what yeah. you love. I you love, love that. that. It's, definitely, and... it's it's definitely what I want to do, and I um I'm like so grateful to get that kind of feedback, because I really want people to first know what why why is it like that. I could tell oh you're 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 uh, this month you will be spending a lot of money, but it's really what what makes it so, and that is what where I want to really teach the people. Also, you can do it yourself. You can just learn to read your chart by yourself, so you don't you're not dependent anymore. You can be sovereign. That is really my goal. And then uh, oh, we're we're so lucky to to have you as our house astrologist. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for that. I love you so much. But also, um, if anyone is interested in having or coaching sessions with Stephanie, learning about astrology, and maybe as they're learning, and you can help them with readings. And in the same time as you're doing the reading, one of the things I love about Stephanie is she's not trying just to be the guru who tells you you have to rely on Stephanie for your information she's very willing to to teach you so that at some point you might be able to break off and start learning to yeah. look at your own chart and learn about astrology more deeply because a lot of a lot of people are out there I think one of the big issues I have is that we shouldn't be creating gurus anymore we should yes. be just creating authentic, like you said, mm. we're authentic girls. Mm. Uh, we're sharing our experience and we want to teach others to mm. be able to have access to the information, whether it's um, you can also channel or, you know, if someone wants to uh, have an intuitive session um, with me for life coaching, I can help them. But I want more than anything to teach them how to make their own connection so they know what to do for their own life. They're yeah. not relying on me. Yes, and yes, yes. I, I love that about you as well, because you're not trying to get clients that rely on you uh, for them to know. So they have to go running to you. Stephanie, uh, should I sell or should I wait? Or what am I supposed to do this week? You don't want yeah. to have clients like that. You yeah, want exactly. to have clients that you've taught them and yes, they can yes. start making the decisions. It goes, it goes hand in hand with your philosophy of like really listen to your intuition. And we all have that. We're just untrained. We, we are we're on purpose. We have been uh, brought away from our own intuition, whether it's medical. And, you know, I mean, all the the medicine people in the like medieval and in the old days, they had to know astrology because there's there's um, information in your body. You have the um, years. I don't know whether I sh showed it. I think not because I was next mm -hmm. to you. So this this doll, this what you use for like um, sketching people, a body. So you have um, you have the whole zodiac in the body. So you have the head, that's Aries and the eyes. Then you have the neck, that's Taurus. The next is the chest, that's Gemini. Then Cancer is the stomach. And and so every every sign is associated with the body part and organs. So in that, it is helpful to know all this. And I think doctors should be going back to this. And mm -hmm. um, but I think we will we will be looking at a very very different future if we if we just go with it. And I think okay, so I say if we go with the changes and evolution, I think we cannot even. Um, not go with the evolution we cannot it, there's no choice mm -hmm. we cannot stay behind so mm -hmm. the next big thing is the 19th of november and mm -hmm. that will be pluto going finally into aquarius and pluto has dipped into aquarius twice it is very rare that a planet goes into the new sign back into the old or previous 
into the new sign, back into the previous, and then into the um, new sign. That is like a massage over a trigger point in, in massage. So when, you, when you're when you trying to break down uh, like a ligament or so in the, in the skin, and that is to break down the construct of banking systems, institutions, a government, mm -hmm corporations and and like hollywood is a corporation what it's a machinery and the control that that pluto is control and manipulation that has been taken place there it's it's all it has been crumbling and now when pluto moves into aquarius for for good for 20 years and um so that will will we will notice that we will notice that and it's such a slow moving planet and it's all about collaboration on eye level. It is all about um, humanitarian things and technology also, but mm -hmm. it has to be ethical. That's the most important thing mm -hmm. that we have to, when when earlier we said we have to, um, we have to, I even don't remember what we said, uh, like it was not the ethical, like become sovereign or so. Whoever listens to it, when you go back to the beginning, when we said like, this is the important thing. Oh, be yes. cool in our head. I think that that was what it mm -hmm. was. But um, I think the, 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 the guideline that we should keep in our minds is whatever we do in terms of evolution and um, artificial intelligence and all this, it's all good and helpful, but you do we use it with the intent of doing a harm or do we use it for 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 the good of humanity and and animals also and the planet so that's the that's the key question mm -hmm. and um that with pluto and aquarius we we get a good chance to to create something way bigger way better and um fair fair also to to be more transparent and and so that's something how do you feel about Pluto in, into Aquarius. I'm very excited to hear that because uh, being an Aquarius, <laughs> yes. I'm very excited because um, lately I've been realizing uh, and yesterday and yesterday, the day before in the course, I told everyone, if you want to start to use your creative intimate energy in your heart center to create for your life mission, you're only going to be allowed access to those energies if you are authentic, transparent, honest, you, you have to have those high vibrational uh, characteristics in your personality in order for you to be able to use the information, in order for you to be able to, to use uh, the universal energy in, in synchronicity. So mm -hmm. there'll be people that want to use some of these things for bad things. But um, from what I understand going forward is there will be very large energetic blocks that will not allow people to use the the information that we are now privileged mm -hmm. to to receive. They will not be able to use it if it is not for the highest good. I love it. Yes, um, I, have, I, I love to hear that. <laughs> I love to hear that, and that makes me know. It makes me know that everything is going to be okay in the planet because the children that are being born are being born with this authentic, sincere awesome. chip. Yes. They're being born with a huge yeah. five five chakra heart center with all of all of this beautiful energy and these children are already like direct connect they they already know yeah. and when they hear bullshit and something isn't right these children say no mom that's not right or or no dad i'm not gonna yeah. allow you to why why are all you you know dinosaurs not being more ethical you know, yeah. and even in school uh, teachers are being told by the their students that mm -hmm. You know, no, this is because the children that are being born now are able to identify when something is crap or when something is yes. on that truth vibration. Yeah. So I, I, I decided to say crap because I'm like, if I use an, that word again, I might not be able to uh, oh. get the, the YouTube things all lined up. <laughs> it's like, okay. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> I like being authentic. And sometimes yes, there's exactly. some things where there are certain words that are very good to use because it really... It really puts the point. They across. are strong. They are strong <laughs> statements, exactly. And it's not that we are vulgar or, or you know, like um, insulting or so, and not at all. But sometimes, I mean, I mean, you know, even, even um, spiritual people use. Oh yes, well, the BS language. word is very good for, for what's going on when people are yeah. trying to use that energy 
Mm -hmm. um, use other people's energy uh, to sell or to manipulate or to, you know, so that's important. Some, I mean, there are people definitely that um, you reach, you want to reach people um, in order for them to rethink, to get out of this um uh, 3D heavy um, manipulative lifestyle, unhealthy lifestyle, eating eating shitty food, and um, mm -hmm. taking shortcuts and relying on the doctor to fix your ailments and not changing your habits, your health habits. So this this kind of thinking, we want to reach these people and give them just a little little inspiration, and it has to be on their standard in a way so then sometimes you have to adjust your language also when I was teaching um, little children so when I want to reach them I have to go to their level of course then you're 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 speaking different with a five-year-old than with a with an adult mm -hmm. teacher or so and mm -hmm. it is normal but um, there's also a middle way I don't want to like really baby them or so and and, and speak mm -hmm. only baby but I have to use examples that they can relate to even though I speak um, like a normal person because as I said I don't I don't um, I don't really like babying kids and mm -hmm. being like oh, da, 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 and only I mean play playful yes but I like also to raise them up to a higher level, mm -hmm. level and find like a mm, like a, a sweet spot that is still raising them up and also showing okay you are still a child and we can be playful with it mm -hmm. yeah and um okay so back to our our three more three more events <laughs> okay wonderful so on the 21st the sun is going into into the sign of sagittarius so sagittarius is is all about truth it is the sign of higher education, the sign of far horizons, and that can be through t uh, distant travel, long distance travel, and it can be inner travel. So we are we are reading poetry, we are reading philosoph mm -hmm. like um, like Rumi philosophers or so, or we are we are like finding um, like I don't know a church community. There's actually church communities here in in orange county where i live there was a church community that had a, a spiritual fair so they even allowed me as an astrologer there so i thought that was so cool because they think oh no it's occult but these guys were cool and then there's like a union church or something in the in san francisco bay area that are mm -hmm. really open so that is back to the sign of Sagittarius that can be religion. And religion is is only like religio. So you're, you're relying back. And that can be even cosmic um, science, you know, cosmic knowledge. We can go back to, the, to living with the um, planetary rhythm because it's all about cycles. And when do they interact? And mm -hmm. when do they overlap? And when two planets come together in the same degree of the zodiac, it's like a reset button and they start their voyage again. And some do take longer. For example, Pluto is 248 years. So that's a long time. We don't have mm -hmm. a Pluto return in our lives <laughs> because we're just not, um, we don't live long enough. So sun and Sag is also putting sun is this is the light it's the big light in in the in our solar system and the sun is i mean having a lot of um activity right now we are in a solar cycle um that we have so many solar flares and those have an impact on uh like weather um, what is it the polar lights you know they went really as far south as switzerland and europe and and so we have solar flares that can interrupt the electrical grid and the GPS system. And of course, our our human bodies, uh, the tectonic plates and animals and plants and all this, it is, you know, rational people that are so bound in their in their trained way, like it has to be like work from nine to five and then going into retirement and then dying. No, it is there's so much more. There's there's i mean an interaction between animals and and sun and animals and humans and humans and and trees because we exhale the carbon dioxide and the trees need that and they give us back the oxygen so mm -hmm. it's a symbiotic mm, mm, teamwork you know and we get have to get back to that so the sun 
is shining the light, as I said, and in the sign of Sagittarius, it's putting the light on the importance of truth and speaking the truth. Because Sagittarius, if it's if some some Sages, if they have if they don't own the good sides of such, then they're um be they are bullshitters. You know, they can be like really having an opinion and um mm -hmm. and only their opinion is the right one and they don't let others like have a say or so. That's the misuse of the beautiful Sagittarian energy. And mm -hmm. so it's a good time when sun, when the sun is in Sag to remember and and incorporate and embody all these good sides, the generosity of Sagittarius, the uh, the intellect, the higher the the bird's perspective, and not just living in the little details, being like seeing the whole picture and being also optimistic. Optimistic. So many people, especially in Germany, there's so um, a lot of people are. Because they're so kept small, they they are they think they are dependent on the government. And I mean, that's not everybody in Germany, but a lot of people are like that. They think, oh, what can I do? What can I, I have no say in it? And what can I change? The government is corrupt, but what can I do? But they can see like every one of us, we can we can start the change from in our, our inner core. And then the ripple effect goes out because you mentioned something earlier that you yeah, I think when you saw, talked about that group, you went in and, and you felt the energy and you the energy was raised. We are all connected to the field, the collective field, and we can inform the field and we can in we can put optimistic thoughts into the field and others can pick it up. And if I talk like, oh, I'm afraid and the war in like Russia and U Ukraine and the war here and the and um, I mean, the eclipses, we have eclipses and it is not easy right now. So I don't want to paint rose colored pictures. Yes. I know there will be um, a bumpy road ahead of us. And um, but I will not be fear mongering. I will I will say this. I will say this. There is a reason why certain destructive has the destruct oh god destruction has to take place on the planet right now. If the lockdowns and all that had not happened, I think a lot of people would still be in this like ooh, like really sleeping and not understanding mm -hmm. the 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 manipulative side behind it and how basically the corporations and not even them. It's not the government that that rules. It's actually their, I think, their puppets. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that the sun will bring a lot of truth out, more truth out in in this in the Sagittarius season. Then the next thing is maybe I give you space here. So no, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. I I really enjoying listening to your okay because I want to get the whole month so that I know what's coming. Yes. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Two yes. more. Uh, so Mercury goes retrograde in Sagittarius. So you see, it's all so connected. Not only the sun is going into Sag, but also Mercury, our mind, our communication, and um, uh, merchandise and 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 economics, because it's about interchange of of goods and services. Also, not only mm -hmm. exchange of data and information that is in our head. And that goes retrograde again. It is introspective time. Um, Mercury goes retrograde um, on the 25th of this month, short before the um, the Thanksgiving, which is such a big vacation in, in the US. So Mercury retrograde is really um, asking us to, to reconsider all these Sagittarian qualities. Not only the sun is putting a light on these Sagittarian qualities, but also Mercury makes us really, where are we? Where are we in our uh, in our life at this point in our life in terms of, of Sag? Are we opinionated? Are we stubborn? Or are we like pushing our opinion on others? Or is it really that we are the optimistic and fun and light and um, helpful agent in our path to evolution and then the the month closes out on the 30th with a new moon another new moon so we are starting on the 1st of november with a new moon in scorpio and we are end at nine degrees of scorpio and we are ending on the 30th of november at nine degrees again nine degrees of sagittarius 
so the new moon so there we can set a seed in in terms of truth in terms of um nobility also like a noble mind a noble heart and 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 being wanting to know more not being this like okay i i just need to know what i what i'm told no wanting to know more wanting to look above our plate and above like at far horizons and wanting to know what's going on in other countries not only especially in the us they're they're really um they know what's in their country but not often are informed also what's going on in other countries because this this is how the average american is trained like the average um, um german is trained a certain way every country is being held in their little bubble and we have to pop the bubble and really um look look ab above uh, uh, mm -hmm. like the horizon so that... i think it's happening more and more because there are more and more people i think the beautiful thing about uh, the whole issue of um the world now is being a combination of all races and cultures in all places and i think this is really helping to pop that bubble because um you know, there might be certain people in certain areas or cultures that don't see much further than than who who they are growing up their circle. But mm. now in many places, like here um, in the hotel, I see people from Argentina, from Chile. We have volunteers from France. So I start to learn more information about the whole world. Yeah. And as more people from different countries move from to the US, to Canada, to Germany, to all over the world, people are immigrating all over the world. And as this is happening and the cultures are mixing, uh, this bubble is being popped in a, in a yeah. huge way, and maybe not in certain uh, age areas, but even like my parents, uh, my mother and her and her partner, uh, they're in their 70s and now they're going to be traveling uh, all around the, the southern hemisphere. So they're going to India yeah. and many places. Cool. And I think as they do this, this, this world cruise that they're going on for six months, really, really special for them. They're going to get a perspective, meet people here, and they will be on the boat with a whole bunch of people from all different cultures as well. And um, as they have that experience, I think it will be a, an a, amazing way also for them to see. Um, also, her, her partner's from Germany. Um, she's from Canada, but they were both, well, he, he is not from Germany. They're both immigrants to Canada, kind of, kind of. I mean, yeah. yeah, we're all immigrants from all kinds of places. Somewhere, somewhere the exactly. Day, yes. Some way or other. But um, yes, they come from the, the Eastern um, point of Eastern Europe uh, immigration to Canada, uh, both of them at different times in their in their ancestry. And it's very interesting because there's a different cultural um, in my family and in your family. And and everybody has this mi this mixture that's happening. It's so it's very very interesting yes and it's also i mean we can learn from each other and what what pops in my head also is the danger of religious wars because as sagittarius mm -hmm. is religion and that's also why a lot of people fled from europe like eastern europe and mm -hmm. um, they fled from the re religious oppression mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. when they got, went to canada and to the us and to southern america so that's mm -hmm. and we see this again all these wars um i mean ukraine russia is a different different thing i think the origin started in 2014 with the maidan but i think what's happening in the in the uh um palestina and israel is really religious and we have a lot of religious war going on also in germany protests so islam islamists want to make islam believe a world religion and i think mm -hmm. that's fanatism and that's the danger with such such a terrier. so we have to be mindful of that mm -hmm. in, in all areas yeah. in all areas because i think even just with diet or or with uh pol yeah. politics or with so many things you know it's very yeah. interesting because um, i have several friends who have the similar opinions that you do about um about the election in the u.s and then i have other friends that have the other opinion i don't even speak anymore the words i don't even say like kamala oh. harris or trump because it's so it's so um oh, crazy right. yeah i would love in many ways for there to be a balance in i think i mentioned to the, this too before i would love for there to be a balance um that maybe the opportunity for a multicultural and a woman 
to become president. So I think either way, whatever happens, as long as everyone can allow, trust and allow the process of whatever it is that happens yeah. um, to be the best possible outcome, because there only will be a problem whoever wins the, the presidency, the problem will, will not be who oh, is elected. You're right. I, the problem I totally agree. is going to be that everyone allows trust and allow the process, whether it is Trump or Kamala Harris who win, there will be benefits in both ways. Because if a woman became president, there'll be many benefits, I think, also. If if uh, Trump becomes president, there'll be benefits as well. Uh, I think people look a lot at the, the economy and many things mm. in that aspect too. I've heard a lot of comments about that. And so either way, there there will be good and bad things and it's not mm. going to be a war or the end of the world. Yes. Whatever happens, we'll I, all I just be fine. And plus, well, I mean, just... all, all politicians, they are basically representative. So it's really not that we should trust, oh, they will make it good. No, they will not make it good. That's up to us right now. It will be up to us, exactly. And yeah. if we can support whoever, whoever wins, mm. we it is our responsibility to support, even in other countries and places, because neither you or me are US citizens. So mm. it will be up to us to support wherever we are, whatever happened, and do the best uh, yeah. that can come. Yes. So so yeah. in, in the period of a month, I think you mentioned about 10 different um, planetary things. And it's the first time I ever heard um, someone look at the moms and talk about the planet. So it was very fascinating for me. Very <laughs> interesting. I'm only just learning. So I'm like, you're, you're like a little chicken just popping out of the egg. And I'm fascinated oh. with your, your, your predictions. And I will be very interested this month to watch, mm -hmm. to see how everything evolves. And then we'll get together on um, either the last few days of November or the first few days of January, Perfect. Or, uh, January, December, when, uh -huh. when we have an opportunity to do this each month. Yes. And each month we'll get more pro at it and, yes. we'll, get, and <laughs> we'll have to get up and pay the gas. And <laughs> <laughs> But it was very, I, I really appreciate it, Stephanie, because um, it's very interesting for me to understand. I feel these things, but now I'm understanding astrologically what it is that we're seeing so i really appreciate you As and an I think Aquarius, so... it doesn't surprise me that you find that you find this interesting and i am super grateful that you came up with this grandiose idea i love it i'm excited about it well i was so excited when you told me that back in the time of the kings there was always a house astrologist <laughs> yes. and that's when i said would you like to be our hokma house astrologist <laughs> And I love it. that. I I'm love that. It, yes. <laughs> and you're very, very good at it. And the way that you explain yeah. the details makes it so that people can really understand and not just really understand, feel it. You make the person feel it because you talk about how these burns and belief could cause a fire because the it's it's a, it's more I love your descriptions. They're wonderful. <laughs> They're wonderful. So so Stephanie, Stephanie Baker, um, if anyone wants to contact even in the message below in comments or uh, I can put in the, the description of the video. And I really highly recommend you as a mentor and an astrology teacher and astrology uh, advice, advice person. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So yes. we'll see you next month. Yes, next month. I'm in. <laughs> Looking okay. forward to it. Thank All you right. so much, Manoli. Okay, take care. Bye. Have a wonderful month. <laughs> Bye. <You too>. Bye. <laughs>